good morning friends in my session earlier we have seen the concept of arrays i told you how to handle a one dimensional array in different ways isn't it we have seen various methods of accessing an array variable if you can recall i told you there are four ways of uh, accessing a, an array variable so today we'll see what all we have discussed yesterday i'll show you i'll demonstrate the code with the output so that you get some clarity yesterday i was talking some theory part you have been writing it out today let me demonstrate the concept in such a way that whatever you have learned yesterday will be shown to you today on the screen so please do focus drop your pens open your notes switch out yesterday and start comparing with the outputs fine yesterday i told you that when array is declared when an array is declared the initial value of the array variables will be a garbage value isn't it so on the screen you have array 1 of 3 in array 1 of 3 array 1 of 3 is found here and i am displaying the values of array 1 of 3 so that to happen the code looks like this so please see the screen here so on the screen you observe that array 1 of 3 is declared it is not initialized when it is not initialized when i am trying to display the values found in that array 1 of 3 print a percentage the array 1 of i i is 0 1 2 3 we observe that the value is 0 0 1 i told you that they are some garbage values and garbage values can be any random number in this case it is 0 0 1 in your machine it can be some other value there is no rule that you will get the same value 0 0 1 no way in your machine on your compiler based you may get different output okay so when array is declared the default value of the array is some random garbage value and then when say print f array 2 of i array 2 is 10 20 30 isn't it so array 2 of i will be 10 20 and 30 when i run the code you will get the output shown to you which is 10 20 and 30 now let us see the different ways of uh, handling the array variable array so I took an array called as array of five, which has got ten, twenty, thirty, forty, and fifty. These are my array values used to initialize my array. Okay, and then I am displaying this array value by saying that array of i. So when I see this array of i, this is one notation. 
and case 2 was it is array i array plus i value at array plus i and case 3 observe it as i plus array isn't it and the last one is your i of array so there are four rotations array of i value at array plus i value at i plus array and i of array i told you that we can handle we can access a value in four different ways and you got the four different ways there and the output is 10 20 and 30 it is 10 20 and 30 so you got four outputs and all the four outputs so array of i 10 20 30 40 50 value at array plus i 10 20 30 40 50 value at i plus array same 10 20 30 40 50 and value at i plus array so array of i i of array value at array plus i and value at i plus array all the four outputs are displayed here cleanly fine so i am trying to tell you that you can access an array variable in four different ways what are they array of i value at array plus i value at i plus array and i of array isn't it four different ways and all the four gave me the same outputs 10 20 30 40 50 hence that is clear Yeah, and the next one is using my pointer. So int array of 5 10 20 30 40 50 and i took a pointer variable called as p array and i'm assigning my array this is my base address this is my base address i'm copying my base address into my pointer variable and i'm trying to access my array values using my pointer so when p array is array it will point to the base address which is address of 10 when i say value at p array it means that you get value at the base address is 10 value at the base address is 10 then when i say p array plus plus it moves to the address of 20 then i say when i say value at p array i get 20 so i get 30 i get 40 i get 50 so please go back to your notes what we have written in the previous session so that we'll get the clarity i have demonstrated this with the tracing part so Right? So you got the same things. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So handling data using pointers. Is that fine? Now. Uh, Assume that I got my array of size 5 in which I initialize only the first value. I initialize only the first value. Okay. We have seen that we have seen that when an array variable or when an array is not initialized, the default value is a garbage value, some random number is found. But I am initializing my array of 2 with a 5 here so this is 0 
वन टू थ्री एंड फोर मैं आ रहे दिस इज इनफैक्ट टेन दिस टेन एंड द रिमेनिंग थिंग शुड बी जीरो 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 when array is not initialized when array is not initialized we get a garbage value but if the first element of the array is initialized we have learned in the previous session that the remaining values the remaining variables which are not initialized will become zero right so if you check the output there if you check the output there output is 10 0 0 0 0 and 0 i hope i'm making sense clear so we have seen the first point when array is declared and not initialized the default or initial values will be garbage values point 2 if at least one element of the array is initialized then the remaining values will be zero for numeric type and space for character type demonstrated and case 3 we have seen how to handle how to display array variables using the four formats array of i value at array plus i value at i plus array and i of array right so now let us see the next demonstration part so <clears throat> yesterday we have learned a word called as pointer array or what is a pointer array a pointer array is an array which is collection of pointer variables and when there is collection of pointer variables we demonstrate the array pointers by storing the address of other variable of its own type now i got pointer p of 3 so pointer p of 3 is found right and p of 0 this is 0 1 2 p of 0 is address of a some address of a p of 1 is address of b and p of 2 is address of c okay this me point to see clear that now when i say value at p of 0 what is value at p of 0 value at p of 0 will be value at p of 0 is address of a so it would be a so what is the value of a value of a is 10 so when when i say value at p of 1 value at p of 1 what is p of 1 p of 1 is address of b so this is nothing but value at address of b that would be b and the value of b is 20 similarly we'll be getting 30 so this will be 10 20 and 30 right so value at p of 0 is 10 value at p of 1 is 20 and value at p of 2 is 30 right So this is what we have seen yesterday also, and the same thing can be done by using uh, instead of writing three different lines, you can write a for loop there, isn't it? So the for loop looks like this. So. instead of writing these three lines i have to for loop for i is equal to 0 i less than 3 i plus plus value at p of i even this will give you the same output output called as 10 20 30 right 10 20 and 30 
isn't it so things are clear now in the same example we have done yesterday like int array was 10 20 30 b was 40 50 60 70 c was 80 and 90 and in pointer p of 3 right and this is again my pointer array which i got three variables when i say a b and c what happens in the case of a it stores the base address of a in the case of B, it stores the base address of B. Case of C, the base address of C. I have demonstrated this neatly with the innermost memory organization in the notes yesterday. Please go through the content taught in the previous session. Please. So, when I say for i is equal to 0, i less than 3, i plus plus, print a percentage d value at p of i. So, p of 0 will be the base address of a. So value at the base address of A would be 10. When I say P of 1, P of 1 would be the base address of B. For base address of B, when I say value at P of 1, it is value at the base address of B, I get 40. When I say, I when, when I becomes 2, value at P of 2, value at P of 2 is nothing but value at the base address of C. So I will be getting it as 80. So 10, 40, 80, the outputs The output will be 10, 40, and 80. So, <clears throat> 10, 40, 80. This was told in the session previously. Please go through it. And in the case 4, Now, if you see my code here, if you see my code here, I am saying PP is P. What is PP? Value at, value at PP. So, it's a double pointer and I am storing the value of P in PP. So, PP is for the value of the pointer array P and here I am taking it as value at, value at PP. So, in your notes, you find it in detail how this, how this part works. Clear? Please go through it once. I'll give you a time of two minutes. We have seen how this works. Value at value at PP, isn't it? Yeah, and the output would be still 10, 40, and 80. Still 10, 40, and 80. 10, 40, and 80. I am mean, displaying the outputs because you will get some clarity on what is being taught. Okay. So, please do learn these things carefully.
So, let me go into the two dimensional array. In the 2D array, we have seen that array of 4, 4 is initialized with some values. For R is 0, R less than 4, C is 0, C less than 4. Print F array of RC. What do you get the output? Right? It's a two dimensional representation of the array. And so if R is equal to zero, what is zero? The first row. R is equal to three. What is 3? The last row and C is equal to 3, the last column. So the output looks like this. Right? So yesterday we have seen different conditions to display the matrix elements in different formats. We have seen principal diagonal, we have seen lower triangle, we have seen upper triangle. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. We have seen lower triangle, we have seen upper triangle, we have seen main diagonal, then main diagonal base, lower triangle and upper triangle, isn't it? And then we have seen that Z form, that N format, that C format, reverse C format. And I hope you have seen that spiral model. I done it? I hope you have done it. So, this is your part. And... Uh, And to tell you that even in two-dimensional array, the memory is allocated sequentially, please look at the code. Yep. <coughs> Mine is a 32 bit architecture, I mean a 32 bit environment where integer takes 4 bytes. So, address of array of 00, 0 is 568572. 4 bytes, 572576580. So, 7276. 6872, 8084, and 8488. So what I want to conclude that is, even if it is a two-dimensional array or an n-dimensional array, the memory is always allocated sequentially. Yes, you have this sequential allocation found. 6872, 76808488, isn't it? So please keep in your mind, for an array of n dimensions, of n dimensions, we find that the memory is allocated sequentially. We have an internal sequential allocation. Address of 00, address of 01, address of 10, address of 11, address of 20 and 21. Right? So please keep that in your brain.
so yesterday we have seen that yesterday we have learned when I mean, the position a of i j a of i j will be same as value at a plus i is value at Isn't it? Now similarly, similarly A of R C would be value at value at A plus R plus C. Isn't it? I told you in my session that two dimensions, two value adds. Three dimensions, three value adds. Four dimensions, four value adds. So when I try to display value at value at a plus r plus c it is same as a of r c so i should get my two dimensional output 10 20 30 i mean 10 20 30 40 and 50 60 the output looks like this right so we observe that this is true a of r c a of r c is same as value at a plus r plus c so So value at value at array plus r plus c is 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. So in your, in your placement papers or PSUs, what you observe is they don't ask you the straight notation. They always look for an alternate notation of displaying data. And this is my alternate notation. Is that fine? So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. Play with that. So now this is handling a two dimensional array using pointers. So I told you that array 4x4 four four is found where I have got 16 elements displayed in that way. And RC, my row value, column value, and this is my this is my value at P of 4. But though it is a pointer array, it is a pointer array which can store four address locations. So I am saying why 4? Because array 4 of 4 indicates that it is collection of 4 arrays. It is collection of 4 arrays, each of size 4. When it is collection of 4 arrays, I use this P of 4 to store the base address of each array. So I understand I say pointer P is array. When I say array, the base address of the first array, array of 0, is kept in this pointer P. And the displaying part pointer p of c if you observe pointer p indicates the base address right so for row r is equal to 0 for the first row first row indicates for my first array i am saying first array 0 first array 1 first array 2 first array 3 when the value of r increases i am increasing my value of pointer p also clear when pointer p increases it points to the next base address. For example, this is my array, array 0, 1, 2, 3. So again, four parts.
So when I say pointer P is array, the base address of 0, this base address, this is called as base address of the first array. And this is copied into pointer P. When you say pointer P plus plus, then the base address of the second array is copied into pointer P. Now second array is 0, 1, 2, 3. So this is again 0, 1, 2, 3. Again pointer P plus plus, the base address of the second The third array. Again, point W plus plus, it is the base address of. So each time I increase my pointer P value, each time I increase my pointer P value, you find this happening. And when I run the code, when I run the code, I get my output 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. See, base address of the first array, first element, second element, third element, fourth element, 10, 20, 30, 40. I do that so. It's fine. This is how we get the output. The dynamic allocation part. So, I, you can say, enter the array size. Can if percentage D comma address of N comma address of N and then you have here for I is equal to zero I less than N I plus plus. Can F percentage D A plus I. So you say print F. It is print F. Enter N elements. Enter n elements and print f elements entered are So, this is my story here. I am declaring array, right? And then instead of going for a static allocation, I am going for dynamic allocation, where in dynamic allocation I can use malloc or calloc. 
राइट सो एम एलॉक अलोकेट्स मेमोरी एट रन टाइम डिपेंडिंग ऑन द साइज गिवेन बाय द यूजर ओके सो अरे साइज इज एन डिपेंडिंग ऑन द यूजर द साइज ऑफ चेंजेस इफ साइज इज फाइव आई गेट फाइव मेमोरी लोकेशन आई मीन आई गेटिंग मेमोरी फॉर फाइव वेरिएबल्स एंड आई एम रीडिंग द वैल्यूज एंड एम डिस्प्लेइंग इट सो लेट एस सी हाउ इट वर्क this okay fine this are i cannot a forgot my semicolon enter a size i enter it as 3 wow wow comma n what is wrong what is happening Give me a second. give me second place this is array of i Fine with that. So let us go to the next story. The next story of handling a 2D array using a single pointer. Assuming that R is three and C is two. Good. So Ah 
in the comparison is found so this is how we have learned yesterday how to create a 2d array using a dynamic functions isn't it so we we'll stop here i'll come back And let us see some story about structures. So on the screen you have a union, union student, care name, intage, float average. I said yes, S is a union variable. So what I'm doing, if you see on the screen, if you see on the screen carefully, you observe that I'm copying Ravi to S dot name and I'm displaying S dot name. I'm copying 37 to S dot age. I am displaying age. I am copying 35.01 to average, displaying the average value. So the outputs are there. So name is Ravi, 37, the average is found. So in unions, we observed that at an instance of time, you can use only one single variable and not more than that, isn't it? So hence, when I am using s dot name, I cannot use a s dot age. And when I'm using s dot age, I cannot use s dot average. Is that fine? It is done because we share the memory of the union members. We share the memory in between the union members. So Ravi takes, I mean, the name takes a space of size 40. Age is 4, average is 4 again on my architecture. So this 40 spaces, this 40 spaces, is shared this 40 bytes is shared among age and average so once you use name you cannot use age average once you use age you cannot use name and average so it goes like that okay so similarly when you speak of structures when you speak of structures So in structure, the only change you have is 
we use the word called as struct destruct student and the remaining things will be same i'm copying name ravi age 37 average and i'm using all my variable at the same time name age and average so what do you get the output is there and the difference between uh, structures and unions is in structures you can access all the members at the same time in structures we can access all the members at the same time whereas in unions we cannot do it okay so please keep that in your mind so on the screen please i am taking a struct called a student with name age and average as members and i am initializing my structure to ravi age is 37 and uh, the average is 99.99 and it goes like this i can handle my name with s dot name i can handle my name with value at ps dot name or i can say ps directed to name right all the three are possible is that fine so similarly age and average right so on screen name is ravi what is or ravi or ravi the alternate forms of displaying it the alternate forms of displaying the name age and average so it is ravi or ravi or ravi and age so the first one is s dot name second one is value at ps dot name and value ps that it to name right so 37 37 37 this is how we find the alternate methods of representing a structure member right so and the next one is we have seen how to copy how to use a structure as a function member i am taking a structure of type student who has got age and average and i am taking struct student yes age is 20 average is 95.5 and in my main method i am taking my function called as yes yes comma s dot age now what is s s is a structure variable to pass yes i need to have a structure variable of the same definition yes is of type student which is a structure i am copying s value into st of type student into structure right so s gets copied into st s dot age is of type integer i take integer x here it gets copied into x and then the value is there and run the code it says st of age so you got age you got average age is 20 average is 20 i mean average is some 95.5 average is 95.5 so if that's the case when i say student st this becomes copied to st so when i say st dot age 
will be 20. ST dot average will be 95.5. And the value of age is copied into X. Now when I say value of X, X will be again 20. So when you run the code, Oh, what is wrong with that? Fine, I should declare it. It is declared and it should work. So fine, we shall see more in the next session. Thank you.